To the far west of the Falklands lies the important wildlife sanctuary of New Island. Acknowledged for its rich cliff lines and beachy shores that teem with animal life, New Island has even been internationally recognised as an important bird area. But beautiful as this area of the Falklands is, the island is currently under threat. Over the past two centuries, four invasive species, rats, mice, feral cats and rabbits, had been introduced by whalers and sealers. These invasive animals are now competing with and predating on native birds and vegetation, further pressuring the island's ecosystems. There are a whole range of, of impacts of non-native species, but to look at the four species that are present on New Island, um, rats and mice uh, will, will predate on small ground nesting birds. They'll also feed on invertebrates, on insects and spiders, um, and also on plant material. So on New Island, um, there are no camel crickets, which, you know, there should be. They're an endemic species and there's good habitat there for them. But the, um, the rats and the mice have removed the camel crickets. And the camel crickets, therefore, are, are a food source for other smaller passerine birds and so on. So there are fewer of those birds than you might expect. So you get these whole um, ecosystem shifts. So the, the sorts of impacts that the species, that the invasive species are having on New Island are quite um, complex and not immediately apparent. The, the most apparent thing is the general degradation of the habitat. And when you compare it to another similar location in the Falklands um, that doesn't have those invasive mammals, it's a very stark difference. You can see that there's a lot more species there and you know the, the, the ecosystem is a lot richer. But although these threats remain present, they haven't been left unchecked. In 2020, wildlife charity Falklands Conservation acquired New Island and has since been working to conserve the island's native wildlife and habitats while preventing further damage. Last year, the charity received funding from a UK government grant scheme to undertake further restoration work on the island while also eyeing the possibility of a future eradication attempt for the invasive species. This two-year project is a Darwin-funded project and it's sort of finding answering some questions that will enable us to know whether um, we can find an acceptable way to do a future eradication of invasive mammals on, on New Island. So there are four invasive mammals on New Island and um, they're all having an ecological impact. So it's really looking to see how we can remove them um, and what the best way forward is. But in order to gain a better understanding of the situation on New Island, further research must continue to be undertaken. In February, Ross and his team visited the island to carry out a survey on white-chinned petrels, a type of seabird whose population in the area is currently in decline. New Island has got an abundance of a lot of wildlife. So, for example, there are two million breeding pairs of prions and lots of albatross and penguins. But there's one species that's only found in a few places in the Falklands called white-chinned petrel. And on New Island, in the last proper census, there was only 28 breeding pairs. Um, and we think they're probably in decline because they're being um, impacted by a range of things, but including on New Island um, invasive cats and rats, potentially mice. So we're here today just to um, try and complete another census of the white June petrels, see how they, their population is looking and see if we can see any signs of uh, any change to that population. Well, so far we've, we've done four uh, sort of long transects down down the slope here to uh, to check for burrows um, focusing on the white chins uh, we we haven't found any white chin burrows in in these four sections they take quite a long time to search through to ensure you've not missed any amongst like the tussock and things like that but they are you know fairly fairly distinct so in in doing so we have found some some sooty shear water burrows which is nice with some some chicks in them so um, that's nice information in itself um, and we're going to kind of call up a halt on on this kind of belt of them for the moment and then do some more transects uh, up the hill next um, and we'll see if we get any different results up the hill um so this, one of the tools we're using is a baroscope it's a small camera and light on the end of a flexible rod um, and we can really carefully put that inside of burrow and it feeds back the um the picture on the screen 
so we can put this in barrows and, and see um, what's in there basically. Sometimes we can see just by shining a torch in from, yeah. from the entrance and we can see if there's a chick in there and what sort of chick it is. But other times we might need a, a camera to go in and particularly if it's up and around the corner. So um, yeah. Oh, that was fluff I think, wasn't it? It was, yeah. I saw it. Um, oh yeah, there it is. Real privileged glimpse, isn't it? Yeah, it is. That's amazing. Shame it's not what we're here to glimpse. <laughs> While the presence of some seabirds like the sooty shearwater was quickly noted by the survey, other bird species were more challenging to locate. Evidence of white-chinned petrels, for example, was very few and far between. I mean, white-chinned petrels are, are only found at four sites in the Falklands. Um, the population is, is small, probably in the hundreds, you know, maybe, maybe low thousands at best, but they are um, a particular a species of particular conservation concern um, and on New Island here um, there's a very small population as, as we understand it um, and they are a species that, that is subject to pressure from um, introduced you know mammals that, that do predate adult birds, chicks, eggs and uh, you know and, and basically uh, cause a decline in the population um, and could in this case with a very small population lead to, to its loss so we're very keen to understand what's here um, and, and how pressing this, this is as a, um, as a concern to address and whether there's any, anything that we can do, any actions we can take or anything that we can do to try and alleviate the pressure on this, on this species which is almost certainly suffering as a consequence of cats uh, and rats uh, on, on this site. There's still a lot more work to be done. So what we found, we, we visited in the late season um, so what we would hope to have found would be white-chin petrel chicks in their burrows and we didn't find any. Um, so we did a systematic survey of the area um, and checked all the burrows that um, were potential white-chin petrel burrows and they unfortunately were, were all empty. What that means is quite difficult to unpick at the moment because it may mean that there was a catastrophic failure of, of, of breeding that year and you know just just by the time we got there for some reason um, the chicks had died or, or you know the eggs hadn't hatched or you know there's some sort of um, impact that had happened before we got there um, so we need to go back next season to have a look earlier in the season to see how many uh, to see if adults are still coming there and you know if they're trying to nest and if they're being successful so there's a lot of work to do next season to really understand the reasons for not finding anything, any chicks in the burrows this season. But, um, but what we can say is, that for this season at least, there was zero breeding success for the, the white chin petrels, which of course is really concerning and something we need to look carefully at. The data collected during these surveys will help to inform management decisions on New Island. One of these decisions could be to attempt an eradication of the invasive species causing harm. While an eradication attempt has not yet been confirmed, the data gathered from these examinations will still help to support wider conservation efforts and knowledge for invasive species management. In a lot of cases, you know, the, the information that, that people have had before um, islands have either had the, their invasive species removed um, or controlled, you know, is very useful to, to demonstrate the, the value of those efforts in terms of you know, seeing an increase in a population after um, introduced predators have been removed helps to, to demonstrate the value of those kind of, um, that kind of work. Um, and so at a, at a global level, um, the more successes and, and the more information there is to support the, a good reason to, to do those kind of things, then obviously the more support and potentially funding and the more likely they are to happen. So, yeah, in, in, a, in a more global context, it's, it's always good to be able to demonstrate the, the value of, 
of um, removal of, of the, the predators, if, if it does you know, subsequently occur here, um, would certainly help, help in other, other locations too. One of the really cool things about projects like this is it shows people, you know, if we look forward into the future, maybe a decade or so, and hopefully we would have succeeded in removing those invasive species and we'll begin to see the recovery. And I think that process shows people that actually it's not too late to have some environmental success stories, you know, that we can do positive things now that really have a major benefit on the environment. Um, I think there's a lot of environmental doom and gloom stories, rightly so, in, in the media at the moment because, you know, we're, we're in a really difficult time for, for the environment and it's important that we don't bury our heads. But this, I think, just uh, projects like this can just show that actually you can reverse that time, you can do things that um, can sort of claw back some of the damage that people have done done in the past. So I think on a, on a very broad scale that's one of the, the, the major benefits of it and then on sort of a smaller scale you know we're learning a lot through this Darwin funded project that sort of lays the steps for the for future eradication and um, so those things that we learn hopefully can be applied to other places and you know help ensure that other um, projects similar to this can you know stand a better chance of of success and, and um, minimising um, non-target impacts and, and maximising the, the chance of success. Due to continue for another nine months, the project's research will look at how an eradication of the invasive species can be made. There are still many factors to consider, but if completed successfully, there is hope that wildlife on New Island can begin its recovery.